So I had a problem with my last build. I went through and made a camera rig. One of the lacking features on it was that the knobs were actually really hard to turn. I think they're about three quarter inch diameter knobs and having the twist them as tight as they needed to go, they didn't quite make the assembly as rigid as it needed to be. So I decided to run a 3D printed knob and show you the process. Here's the knob. So I don't know if you can see that, you got your press fit hex, just like I had on the other pieces of the, of the ball and socket joint. We'll share how I set this up and I'll show you how I'm installing it. A 7 16 wrench is used to tighten a quarter 20 nut, but it isn't exactly 7 16 which is 0.4375. You can see here that it actually measures 0.431. Moving on to my SOLIDWORKS model, you can see that I have a series of two discs. One is three inch diameter and one is inch and a half diameter, both about half an inch thick. Then I added a chamfer to round over and the notch cutouts, I just did a circular pattern to create the grip. There's a fillet on the back end of this knob to avoid a focal point for shear stress so that I won't be tightening it up and it might break in two. Now since the nut for a quarter 20 bolt actually measures 0.431, I'm making this hex extrude cut 0.430 so that it'll be a 1,000th press fit. Something about how I spec my sizes in my videos, I will always refer to it like a machinist would. It'll be in thousandths, so 1,000th would be 0.001. 0.100 would actually be referred to as a hundred thousandths. So an eighth inch would be a hundred and twenty-five thousandths. I'll show myself measuring the actual knob once it's finished 3D printing here later in the video, and you can see that I actually get 0.4305, which is still a half thousandth undersize. Luckily that'll still create a press fit. This speaks to the accuracy, or rather the lack of accuracy in 3D prints. Of course my perspective is always that of a machinist and an engineer. I always want things to come out the exact the way I expect them to be. And you can see here, I'm measuring 0.4305. I've taken off some of the knobs at this point and started disassembly. You can see some kind of limp noodle assembly right now. An easy way to press fit the nut into your 3D print after it's done is to simply screw it on to a screw and then push it in. It acts as an arbor. Being only a half thousandth press on this, it makes it rather easy to push in. It's not really too hard to assemble. It's time to take this thing apart and see how the new knobs help with the rigidity. Another thing I'm trying to do with this knob is the faces have the same diameter that mate with the assembly so I can create as much surface area pressure as possible. My hope is to create as much friction as possible by all this surface pressure. I will say the larger diameter handles make this a lot easier to adjust and tighten quickly. A knob like this can be used anywhere around the shop. So you can use it for clamps, for your tooling, for all kinds of stuff. So I think it could be of great use to know how to do this. And press fits are very important to learn for the shop. I think it's a great skill to know when you're designing your parts. It's something great to consider so that you can imbue your 3D prints with hardware that is much stronger and can hold up for assemblies and do more practical things. So in a way, by doing this, if you can think about hardware and how you can interface it or imbue it into your 3D prints, you can give it more functionality, more use, more rigidity. Like threads like this, you could not 3D print them, but putting a hex bolt into this piece by use of a press fit enables me to have a lot of strength. It adds a lot of rigidity. These threads won't wear anywhere near what a 3D printed thread would do. All this being said, this is still kind of a prototype for me. Uh, it holds for the most part and it still has issues, it'll still slip. Mostly because the fill is, I think, a hexagonal fill, meaning you only have about three or four walls of 3D printing before it just goes into mostly void, but with a network of extrusions inside here to keep it like a honeycomb, to give it a structure. I could do a solid fill, which might actually help, but 
I can't help but thinking that something like this would be better off with uh, machining or with some more traditional materials. Hard plastics like machining out of Lexan or aluminum might be really good for this. 3D printing is a really great way to go through a design and produce something really fast and actually do something really organic in a way. Produce it in a way that traditional means couldn't necessarily do or couldn't necessarily do easily. 3D printing is really great for rapid prototyping, so you can get a concept together and really test the functionality and geometry of a part before you proceed to something more permanent. I wanna thank everybody who's subscribed. Right now I have about 44 subscribers, so we're continuing to go up at the time of this recording. And it's a slow process, but I'm gonna keep putting out videos and sharing what I know and my failures and my discoveries. And I think it could be something beneficial for people, or at least I hope so. Please comment if you have anything to contribute. Please ask if there's something you'd like for me to go through. I'd love to share something people actually want to see. So it'd be nice to know. So if anybody's out there who has a 3D printing company and they want to send one to an engineer for an evaluation and to test it with designs of parts and push its limits, let me know. I'd love to do it for you. Mark Forged, I'm looking at you. If you haven't seen my previous video for the uh, 3D printed camera rig, please go check it out. It's how I built all of this to start and the process I went through to get there. All right. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time.